Modi government last week signaled a return to the license per bit Raj. When it announced that the companies will need prior license to import laptops, tablets, and other devices. PM Modi's former advisor and Niti Ayo chief, Arbin Panagareya, immediately dubbed it as an unfortunate development, a throwback to the Nehruvian era, he said. For years, rather decades, the BJP in general and Narendra Modi in particular, both as Chief Minister and Prime Minister, he had said that the license permit Raj symbolized ham-handed state regulation, inextricably linked to Nehruvian socialism. Arvind Panagariya himself had said again and again, that the license permit Raj was the major cause for the meager economic progress for four decades, from 50s till 80s. This economic rationale squared well with the political agenda of both the BJP and Mr. Modi. Linking India's underdevelopment to Nehru's Rather, the Congress dynasty's license permit Raj policy made strong political sense. It was a win-win situation for Mr. Modi and the BJP to denigrate the license Raj policy of Pandit Nehru for years. But then why has Mr. Modi now returned to the same policy which he had trust years together? To me, it appears that Mr. Modi has now come to realize that the license permit Raj policy was not that bad after all. The Prime Minister perhaps now believes that the license permit policy was and is in the national interest. Mr. Modi's new set of advisors are perhaps telling him that the license permit Raj gave Indian economy stability in the 1950s and 60s. In fact, what Mr. Panagaria and others talk about low rate of growth, which was about 3 to 3.5 percent, which was again pejoratively termed as Hindu rate of growth, that was not that bad after all. Perhaps Mr. Modi and some of his advisors have recently read that book, that famous book, India Today, by Stuart Coverage of London School of Economics, John Harris of Simon Fraser University, and Craig Jeffrey of University of Oxford. This book, which was published in 2013, was indeed pathbreaking in many senses. What this distinguished academic said in that book? They said that 3 to 3.5% 3 3 annual growth was not outlier in the negative sense in the 1950s, as was made out to be the lights of Jagdish Bhagavati, mentor of Professor Panadaria. In fact, they said that rate of growth was much higher than most rather all African countries that achieved independence around the same time. Yes, the East Asian tigers, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Korea, these countries had a much higher rate of growth than that of India. But then they said that was because, among other things, their economies were commandeered by authoritarian politics. In fact, these professors draw our attention to the fact that India achieved its year-wise best growth rate of 9%, mind you, 9%, which is 
much higher, 50% higher than that of the East Asian traders, which had registered about 6% growth. That was in the year 1975 and 76, we had achieved that growth. That was the year of national emergency. Will Indians like to live under emergency Raj to enjoy higher growth rate? These professors ask. Prime Minister Modi and his advisors must have also chanced to open the IMF report of 1996 that made exactly the same point. It said categorically that East Asian states had forced their societies to make enormous sacrifices of consumption and leisure to achieve these growth rates. Therefore, the IMF report said, even if the success of these East Asian countries can be replicated elsewhere, it's probably not wise to do so. Certainly not in a democracy. Now, perhaps Mr. Modi realizes that this policy of license permit Raj had nothing to do with the ideological persuasion of socialism. It was just an economic policy tool to give India's indigenous business groups protection from external competition so that they could grow and India's economy did not get overwhelmed by foreign multinationals. PM Modi's new advisors have possibly shown to Prime Minister that contrary to popular imagination, the Indian business flourished in 1950s and 60s. Again, perhaps Prime Minister Modi and his advisors recently read the economic historian Chirashri Das Gupta, who in our both state and capital in independent India, had shown that during the license permit laws of 1950s and 60s, there was, in fact, both growth and deepening of old industries, such as cement, paper, sugar, and many others. There was also diversification of capital into many new sectors. Having read all this, the book by distinguished professors, the book India Today, the IMF report, and the photos work of Dr. Das Gupta. And this is certainly not an exhaustive list. Many things, many more things Prime Minister's advisors must have read. That's why they, Prime Minister Modi and his advisors now perhaps convinced that license permit Raj was a good economic tool and it continues to be so. But due to political compulsions, the Prime Minister can't say it publicly. All his life he has trust Nehruvian politics and economics. The Congress continues to be the country's leading opposition party. So openly singing pians to Nehru's economic policies would be politically suicidal for Prime Minister Modi and his party. But then our Prime Minister is a nationalist. If the license permit Raj policy is in the national interest, then he is probably ready to accept it without, of course, acknowledging that he was following the footprints of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The big announcement about the need for licensing for computer items last week is perhaps just the precursor, just the beginning. This is likely to be followed up by other announcements that will return India firmly to the Nehruvian age. As we said, we understand Prime Minister Modi's political compulsions in not paying an open tribute to Pandit Nehru. But then, as they say, actions speak louder than empty words. By his actions, by following the license permit Raj policy of Nehru in both later and spirit, 
Prime Minister Modi has paid the best tribute that he could offer to the first Prime Minister of India. Hope you agree with me.